So today we're going to talk a little bit about what really is an epidemic today, uh, and that is an epidemic of metabolic disease. And in huge degree, this is driven by obesity. Um, you'll notice this uh, on the left-hand side of the slide, uh, the fact that diabetes, particularly uh, so-called adult-onset diabetes, is being seen with increasing prevalence in the pediatric population. It's a major problem and really does not bode well for uh, health economics in the future. So let's talk a little bit about some of the pathophysiologic mechanisms associated with metabolic disease. Notice at the top, excess body weight. Uh, in particular, excess visceral fat uh, leading to insulin resistance and elevated blood sugar. There are a number of different mechanisms that uh, at the end of the day lead to an increase in oxidative stress. The one we'll focus on primarily today is advanced glycation end products, glycotoxins. And notice that uh, glycotoxins tend to increase nuclear factor kappa B, protein kinase C, leading to an increase in soluble biomarkers of endothelial dysfunction, including E-selectin, ICAM, and VCAM, ultimately leading to reactive oxygen species and an increase in free radical oxidative stress. We live in a celebrity society. So one of the things I, I talk about is uh, people might be surprised to know that there are uh, a number of celebrities walking among us, of those who have been walking among us in the past, who had type 2 diabetes. Um, I think most of the folks are known here on the slide, but all of these people um, either have or had uh, type 2 diabetes. So let's talk a little bit about the biochemistry of accelerated aging and the AGE pathway, uh, the glycotoxin pathway. Uh, caloric intake, telomere length, DNA repair, cellular apoptosis, a whole variety of uh, aging mechanisms are really linked to the glycotoxin pathway. Now when I give lectures on this topic, I always put up this slide and I ask people in the audience if they know who the distinguished looking gentleman to the left is. And since all of you have attended my previous lectures, you'll know this is Mr. Louis Maillard. Now why have I put that gentleman up next to a piece of toast? Well, it's not because I'm crazy. It's because uh, Louis Maillard uh, was the gentleman who discovered the Maillard reaction. And the Maillard reaction is uh, exemplified by toast at the right. We're going to talk a little bit more about it. Um, the Maillard reaction is seen in everyday life. It is the browning effect that occurs when you cook foods, particularly foods that are high in fat as well as protein. And notice that we have a variety of cooking methods here, uh, none of which are characterized by using uh, water or a liquid media to cook the food. Notice at the upper left-hand corner, that's a barbecue over an open flame. Notice the food is very brown. That browning effect, also known as the Maillard effect, uh, is linked with uh, glycotoxins. The gentleman in the lower left is making Peking duck. Uh, about a year ago, I was in Singapore giving a lecture, and the audience was very disappointed to know that uh, actually Peking duck, the skin, is associated with a very, very high level of uh, glycotoxins. So I put in this slide just to give you uh, some relative information on levels of glycotoxins in different foods. Many people will be surprised to know, hi, how are you, uh, be surprised to know that in fact um, foods that are rich in lipids, fats, are actually, uh, that is for a gram basis, per weight basis, higher in glycotoxins than carbohydrates. People readily associate uh, high carbohydrate food with having an increase in glycotoxin, but actually it's the high protein, high fat foods. And notice uh, olive oil, butter, mayonnaise, comparable to a number of high protein, high fat foods here. With we know that dietary glycotoxin intake correlates very well with the level of glycotoxins in the serum. I'm going to go through these fairly quickly. We can come back and revisit this. I'd like to allow enough time to, for discussion at the end of the talk. Um, we also know from a number of studies, I put in this slide here, um, that the levels of AGEs are, are certainly elevated in aging. And note the title of our discussion today. 
and that is the relationship between accelerated aging and the phenomenon known as glycation. Very interesting fact that I often mention to folks. Um, one thing that we need to bear in mind with diabetes and metabolic disease is those folks really are aging at an accelerated rate. Uh, and we know this from literature that is not new. This is a study published back in 1975 showing that there is a disconnect between the tissue assessment of aging, if you will, and chronological age. In so-called metabolically normal folks, you can gain a very good approximation of their chronological age by looking at their tissues. That is not true in the case of diabetes. Uh, we also know that glycotoxins tend to worsen insulin sensitivity or alternatively increase insulin resistance. We know that glycotoxins are associated with accelerated apoptosis of stem cells. We also know that glycotoxins tend to alter leptin concentration in adipocytes, and this has uh, potentially important implications that we can discuss a little bit later. We also know that there is data linking uh, AGEs, glycotoxins, and an increase in atherosclerosis. So let's talk a little bit about the difference between glycation inhibitors and glycation breakers. Uh, aminoguanidine, which we can talk about at the end of the discussion, because I typically do get questions on that when I talk about glycation. Uh, carnosine and aspirin. There are actually other pharmaceutical agents as well. Uh, nifedipine, which is a calcium channel blocker, as well as ACE inhibitors tend to act to inhibit uh, glycotoxin, or I should say AGE crosslinks. There are other drugs in development. Uh, there's a compound called elegebrium, uh, and they are modified theozoleum salts, uh, and they tend to be AGE breakers. Let's talk about a very interesting B6 vitamin called pyridoxamine. Uh, very interesting data on this. Uh, pyridoxamine has been shown to inhibit oxidative degradation of the intermediates in the Maillard reaction called amidori intermediates. Uh, we also know that pyridoxamine tends to inhibit uh, glycotoxin reactions. This is a great study that I use. I think it's incredibly impressive data. Uh, these are folks who had uh, type 2 diabetes. Uh, they had diabetic nephropathy. And the graph on the left uh, looks at serum creatinine over time, two different groups. This is a placebo-controlled study and they looked at pyridoxamine treatment versus placebo, and you'll see some very nice, robust uh, changes versus the placebo group in terms of serum, serum creatinine over time. 